Welcome to the first episode of the Johnny Yu Show. Today, I'm heading to Awesome Coffee, which is located in Koreatown here in LA, to sit and talk with James Barkman. James is an adventure photographer who lives and travels in his van while capturing breathtaking outdoors images. My goal is to get tips from James on how to become a better photographer and to find out how he can afford to travel to the most beautiful places in the country. James Barkman, good seeing you again, bro. It's so been like you, it's been like a year and a half now since yeah. I've seen you last time here in California. Here yeah, in California. Yeah, dude. So I really wanted to interview you because you're one of my favorite uh, Instagram users. I love the pictures you put all the time. Super inspiring. I'm mostly jealous because I'm like, how is this guy <laughs> doing this? But just update me, just how's life just in the past year since I've seen you last time? Yeah, dude, it's been so wild. So many things have happened. But um, basically, in a nutshell, um, <clears throat> in May, I was living in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and living in my van, doing little trips, and just trying to build my, uh, I guess, like photo portfolio and trying to just trying to make it, you know, and take steps for it. So in May, I moved out here and interned with. Uh, the adventure photographer Chris Burkard. So for the summer I've been working with him, did a bunch of trips. It was an amazing opportunity. Got to go to Alaska for two weeks, um, went to Havasupai, hiked Mount Whitney, and just a bunch of really rad spots. So explain to me, he's an adventure photographer. What does that even mean? And do you, are you an adventure photographer? I would consider myself, yeah, more along the lines of like an outdoor adventure lifestyle photographer. Um, so, so question is, how did you get into it? Like, how did you get into photography? And like, how did you grow in that? So about two years ago, um, I bought a DSLR for the first time and loved it and just started shooting photos and um, yeah, just like went for it, I guess. So you have a lot of different followers that are interested because of different things. Yeah. So question for you is, if they're looking at you and they're saying, this is awesome, this lifestyle, what you're doing, whether it's photography, whether it's being free in a van, living in a van, or whether it's, you know, just going to really beautiful places and being outdoors, is what would be your advice for people that want to do that? Like, how can they start? So, I think the most important thing is just like relationship with God. I tell a lot of people that and they're like, you know, it's kind of cheesy, but it's real and it's why I'm here. Secondly, I think um, it's really important just to take risks and really pursue what you love um, and yeah just take practical steps towards that you know and um, for me when I started it practical steps it looked like moving to my van shooting every day looking up photographers every day and studying them like what did I love about them like you know what did I not like like just just taking small steps you know taking steps no matter how small they were and that's that's honestly like how it started for me and just getting inspired and you know going out there and doing it and seeing it for myself I mean you've been living in your van for how long now over a year over a year but a lot of people can look at you especially the Christian world can look at you and say this guy's scared of commitments yeah. or this guy is is escaping reality what what would be your response I mean I feel like it's so important to to be who God created you to be and like that can look like so many different things and for me God told me like hey what are you doing with the talents and abilities and desires I've given you and I was like oh snap I don't know like not a whole lot <laughs> yeah tell me a little bit about like your upbringing and how do you think that influenced you today whether it's faith whether it's in photography whether it's in the living in the van bro lifestyle like how did you become yeah. that from your childhood yeah um, well, I was raised in Lancaster County, kind of like a conservative um, region or county. And my family is very conservative Christian. They're awesome, love the Lord. They were, my parents were wild missionaries. But, um, so that's probably part of it, the wild missionaries <laughs> part. <laughs> yeah, they were, yeah. they were so crazy. Like dad would, you know, hit jaguars on the head in the river. <laughs> he's, he's crazy. But um, yeah, growing up, like, um, just kind of went to church, did the whole thing, and got really sick of like Christians and all that, and really bitter towards like, um, yeah, just like the church and Christians. And I was like, man, if this is what God is, then like, you know, I don't think I want any of that. So I, I really just like did my own thing, and um, you know, kind of just like lived it up. I just wanted to have fun. And then 
about three years ago, I had an encounter with God that um, totally changed my life and basically, you know, got saved three years ago. And for the first time, God was real. And that's, that's when it became a relationship, not a theory. Any photographers that you recommend for people to follow? Because a lot of people that are following you are interested in outdoors, adventure kind of thing. So any resources that you would recommend? The, some of the guys I love that really inspire me are Forrest Woodward. He's like an adventure, you know, travel writer, photographer, whatever. Um, Chris Burkhardt's really good. And I really love like documentary type stuff. That's really the direction I'm trying to go. So like the National Geographic dudes like Jimmy Chin, Renan Oster, all those guys. Yeah, I love what that. What would be your advice if someone wanting to get into photography and wanting to grow their platform? Yeah, it's, it, you really have to set yourself apart and it's so important to find a niche and really hone in on that and, and grow in that because a lot of guys are, you know, they're trying to do everything. They're trying to do portraits, they're trying to do landscapes, they're trying to do lifestyle, they're trying to do, you know, it's just like too broad. And so it's really important to find what you love, find that niche and really grow in that and that'll set you apart, you know. So your advice is stay focused rather than doing different things. So if someone Absolutely. calls you right now and they want to hire you to do their wedding photography, are you going to do that? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, if I really needed money, I probably would, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I really try to like focus on the things that I know I need to grow yeah. in. So um, what other advice would you say for someone that is starting? Yeah, I would say it's really important to immerse yourself in the culture of what you're passionate about. Um, and just like developing your creative eye is so important. And it's not, it's, it's less about all the gear you have, you know, and, and more about your ability to, to capture and to see things, you know, and, and, and to capture stories through, you know, visual visual images and through film and video, so. Um, tell me about a couple of pictures and a couple of places that you're just like, were just incredible experiences, like places you're like, this was just an amazing place to shoot and a couple of pictures you're just really proud of. Yeah. Um, I know you've taken it, thousands. It's so hard. So it's, yeah. <laughs> so hard. Um, some of the photos I am most proud about though are uh, what I shot on film. I love 35 millimeter and, and you know, just shooting film because it's so raw and you can't manipulate the image. What you shoot is what you get. There's also one shot I took in Alaska that was on a glacier. We're all roped up and um, the guide's ahead of me and we're, we're trekking on this glacier and you can see the rope leading to him and it's just like this epic glacier in the background. So that's definitely one of the, the my favorite shots for sure. It, it just tells such a story and takes me back every time I see it because I remember that experience, you know? That's really so. cool. And you've had crazy like things you've done because like when you're surfing I mean sharks and cars breaking down <laughs> tell me one story where it was like this was scary <laughs> um, probably one of the like sketchiest moments was when I drove coast to coast I was coming over the Rockies in the van and the van's running a little rough and that night um, a snowstorm was dropping it was like 15 inches that night or something on the Rockies, so we're like, oh man, we need to cruise. So we start going, get caught in the middle of it. Um, <laughs> I'm going up literally the Rockies in first gear, like 10 miles an hour, semis, trucks are like passing me, and I don't have any heat in the car, you know? And um, the windshield kept freezing over from this, the snow and ice. So we, I'd, we'd have to stop, like scrape it off, and like get going again. We could barely get going because the snow was getting deeper. So we drive and then like it would freeze over and I got my head out the window trying to drive, you know, and then finally um, we stopped at a car, at a store, bought like eight candles and then lit them and put them on the dash. So I'm like peeking through this little <laughs> spot in the windshield where the, where it's defrosted, you know, and it was like, it was at night at that point. You could barely see ahead of you. It was so, it was so hectic, like almost crashed a million times. <laughs> but you fixed the heat problem. So yeah, I have a wood stove now. You have a wood stove in your van. <laughs> Got to, man. Wow. Got to stay crazy. warm. <laughs> and you installed it yourself, a heat a wood mm -hmm. stove. Yeah, okay. found it on Craigslist, threw it in. That's awesome. Cranks that's, out the heat. That's crazy. <laughs> the one question is when you see people with just incredible photos on Instagram, we're always told this is not real life. Yeah. You know, those people have boring jobs and they have <laughs> to do this on the side. This is not real life. But the crazy thing with you is this is real life. <laughs> so, how the heck do you do it? Like, <laughs> like I don't need much to live. So I really try to spend my money on 
you know, experiences rather than things. So I don't have a lot of stuff. Everything I own is in my van. So that really helps me to like do what I love because I don't have, you know, there's not a lot of like expenses in my life. I try to like spend it on gas so I can go see some crazy And I love you know? what you just said because I actually read it recently in an article where it says that people that spend money on experiences rather than things are actually happier and they yeah. can get more done. Um, if you have to pick another career, if photography and traveling, taking photos is no longer an option, what career would you pick? I would want to be a stuntman. I wanted to be a stuntman my whole life. <laughs> just like, I love, I'm very much a thrill seeker and an adrenaline junkie. It's how I've been my whole life, you know, and I, I love danger and risk probably to like an unhealthy degree, but I would love being like some crazy stuntman, you know, like jumping off cliffs, like driving car, I don't know. Seems kind of unrealistic, but that's a real thing, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. I know a guy that's a stuntman. <laughs> so you guys can you. connect and it can be a side yeah. job. Be I want to know, like right now, you're 22. If you are 42 right now and you look back 20 years later, 20 years from now, when you look back, what would you like to see yourself accomplish through what you're doing right now? Yeah, um, I, I really just want to change culture, you know, I want to change the culture and bring the culture of the kingdom. And there's so many people out there, like, you know, um, I always use these people as an example, like Jimmy Chan, I'm sure you've heard of him, he's a National Geographic photographer, you know, a million followers on Instagram and like every other platform, Richard Oscar, Chris Burke are the guy I worked for, they have, they're incredibly influential, you know, incredibly influential, and they, what, their, their words hold power and when they say something the world listens, you know, and that's like power and authority and imagine if if like people who love the Lord, you know, were in those positions, imagine how much influence they would have, you know, and like I want to be someone who who influences those people and like ultimately becomes, you know, someone like that. Okay, uh, if people want to reach you, uh, what's the best way to reach you? Um, they can reach me by my website, jamesbarkman.com or my email, uh, jameseborkman.com, or find me on Instagram and send me a message. I don't know. So. That's awesome. James E. Borkman at Gmail. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's perfect. Email. Dude, awesome. Thank you so much. Absolutely, so man. So good seeing you, bro. So fun. All right.